When we see a little girl with her hair in plaits, when we see the ribbons that her mother has put in her hair, we ought to know that we all owe a responsibility to ensure she's kept safe. Because that little girl is not just a five-year-old girl, she's actually somebody's grandmother. If she happens to encounter gender-based violence, perhaps rape from the family, or maybe in school, at university, she may not survive that long. How many of us love the attention, the affection, the love, the embrace of a much older grandmother? The words she speaks to you, how she makes you feel, how she dotes over you, how she loves you. By exposing the girl child to these challenges, they may never make it that far. They may never make it that far. An entire generation is at risk. This multifaceted problem that we have, I hope we will encourage stiffer penalties, as many people have said already. But I fear that we may all be thrown under the bus. Not every lecturer in every university is raping the students. Not every girl in every university in Nigeria is being raped. We must learn very quickly to isolate and identify the ones that have chosen to take the wrong path. If we don't, entire universities, entire polytechnics, entire colleges of education will be thrown under the bus. In each institution, in each organization, in each tribe, in each neighborhood, in each group of people, perhaps we have the good, the bad, and the ugly. If we identify the bad and the ugly, it is our responsibility to identify and isolate them and ensure that they are prosecuted to the full extent of the law. It would be a shame if what we hear is that if you send a child to a Nigerian uh, tertiary institution, the girl child, she's going to be raped. That would be most unfair. Nigeria does not accept. Nigeria has laws against, Nigeria has institutions against abuse of every form, whether it is assault, whether it is uh, rape or sexual molestation. There are laws that have been put in place. And this shows us that this isn't who we are. This isn't who we are. Who we are as Nigerians, we're kind, we're warm, we're bubbly, we're full of life, we're full of zest. We're hospitable, we love our parties, we love our singing, we love our dancing. And all over the place, we excel. The advocacy that I encourage us to participate in, I encourage us to participate in speaking to as many people as we can and helping them to process the information that is coming to them. So if we hear, or if we watch that horrible, horrible movie, or horrible video clip, or the sex for grades video, we need to process it, and we need to ensure we help other people to process it. We need to speak to those who may be tending towards wanting to abuse and show them that this is another human being. This is someone's mother, this is someone's sister, this is someone's baby. Your liberty stops where another person's liberty begins. You don't have a right to touch a person. We need to stand up for one another. We need to stand up for our families, for our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, our brothers. We need to stand up for those who want to play in the neighborhood. The young girls should be able to play safely in the neighborhood. We need to stand for the woman who wants to go to the market. She just wants to go and do her shopping. She doesn't want to be touched. She doesn't want to be pulled. She doesn't want to be pushed. We need to speak up for the ones that want to have an education, have chosen to get an education. 
the parents, the, the, the guardians have paid for them to get an education. At the Women's Helping Hands Initiative, we have a group called Concerned Mothers. And you can dial for a concerned mother if a lecturer asks you to come into his office for a meeting. I wish we had as many concerned mother, mothers as we needed. But the concerned mother will come with you. She will stand with you in the lecturer's office until he finishes saying what he wants to say. Whatever he can't say in the open lecture theater, the concerned mother will be with you in his office. And if he says to you, come back tomorrow, die for the concerned mother, she comes back with you until he learns to say what he wants to say to you in the presence of other people. We must stand up for one another. There are groups, there are communities, there are organizations here that can organize such things. Organize a support structure for our people. Organize a support structure to ensure that they do not become victims, talk less of survivors. With the rate of mental health uh, challenges that we have in the world today, many may not survive because they find it easier, perhaps, to just end it all. I've been in the life of a young girl who at 17 was raped by her grandfather. She was at our shelter for a few months. She had the baby in the shelter, in the hospital, but she was at the shelter. Her mother had her before she got married. And when she got married, she thought she was keeping her daughter safe by keeping the daughter at home with her parents. But her dad raped her daughter, and that baby was born in our shelter. Everybody's sitting, having lunch, or talking, and the memories come, and she feels like throwing herself down and rolling on the floor. The amount of time it takes to walk with her till she's through that situation is far too long. It's much better for us to ask for an opportunity to speak. Each time there's a parents' teachers association meeting, each time there's a neighborhood meeting, each time there's an office meeting, ask for five minutes and just speak to people and speak to them and tell them, save our people, save our children, save our girls. And what they hear is likely to change their minds. What you tell them is likely to change their minds. Another lady was with us for a few months. Her husband held her down and with a hot iron, he ironed from her neck to her laps. And so she has just the one scar from neck to lap. These horror stories are unbearable. They're the stuff that nightmares are made of. And we say no to it. I'd like to add my voice. And I pray you will also add your voices whenever you get the opportunity, wherever you get the opportunity, at any time you get the opportunity, to say to them that each Nigerian is precious. Our boys are princes, and our girls are princesses, and they deserve better. Please add your voice to the voices of others to advocate for a stop to rape sexual molestation and every form of abuse. Thank you.